coming in. George sends it right through. Welcome to the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology where tonight Hockey That Counts returns for the first time since last March. The corner crew and band settling in as RIT and Union are on the ice for warm-ups in anticipation of tonight's 705 puck drop. You are looking live at goaltender Christian Short. He only started two games last season tonight. He'll make his first start since January 21st. Short told us in the offseason he has something to prove. Well, he's got that shot here tonight. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live, presented by Taylor the Builders. Over the next half hour, we'll be joined live by head coach Wayne Wilson. We'll hear from Union about their slow start to the season. And RIT President David Munson will weigh in on what the future may hold for athletics here at RIT. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach, and welcome to RIT Sports Zone pregame live here on CW Rochester and streaming online at RITSC.com. Well, the Tigers opened the season last weekend at the Blue Cross arena as they hosted number 14 northeastern on brick city homecoming a great atmosphere year in and year out last saturday marking the very first meeting between these two programs freshman logan Drackett got the start in net for rit after a scoreless first period the tigers gave Drackett some support just 50 seconds into the second miles powell the captain putting in the rebound for his First of the season, RIT had a 1-0 lead. Later in the period, final seconds of a Northeastern power play opportunity off the faceoff. Watch Mark Logan coming up out of the box, coming up with a puck too. Caden Primo stops him, but Eric Brown, the hustle play, gets the rebound to go. RIT's leading scorer from a year ago gave the Tigers a 2-0 lead. Tigers would finally get a power play of their own, and they would capitalize. Brady Norris, the shot. Eric Brown gets his second of the night right there. The building was jumping. RIT had a 3-1 lead after two periods of play. Third period, here come the Huskies. Garrett Cockrell in the slot, beating Logan Drackett. It was a one-goal game. Under three minutes to play, Northeastern on the power play, moving the puck around. Watch the movement here. And Logan Drackett not able to rotate over in time as they get the equalizer. Dylan Sakura scores to tie the game at three. Under 30 seconds to play in regulation. RIT, a golden opportunity here. Brady Norris taken down. That'd be a penalty. But RIT would not capitalize on it in overtime. Miles Powell, the shot. Liam Karens deflects it off Caden Primo. The Tigers and Huskies skate to a three-all tie in a game RIT feels they should have had. We played a good team tonight and kind of shows what type of team we are. Um, to give up the lead 3-1, I mean, we took way too many penalties in the third period and eventually that stuff's going to catch up to you. So. A, t a team that's skilled, you can't be taking penalties like that and caught up to us. It was a great opportunity, and I can't thank the coaches enough. And um, I like to make more saves tonight, obviously, and win, win the game for us, or not for us, but win the game. Um, but overall, like, there's some things I need to work on, and um, it's nice to get in an actual game action to, to see the game. So I'll learn from it, and I think I think overall I played all right, but there's definitely some improvements. Uh, most goals are scored in. Uh, you know that little area in front of the net. Um, when you get to, when you start creating chaos, people get confused. People lose their guys, and pucks scored loose, and you can put them in the net. So, I think uh, uh, as a team, I think we need to focus more on guys crashing the net, trying to get pucks through into the net, and not playing on the outside or trying to make those extra little moves. And you know, like I said, just getting the puck to the net because that's where where goals happen. So. Yeah, they happened for the Tigers last weekend. Joined now by the head coach of the RIT Tigers, Wayne Wilson, in his 19th season. Another year underway, and we start off with some big news here tonight. Your defenseman, Brady Norris, not playing here this weekend, coming off that ACL injury from a year ago, had a setback in practice this week. How serious is it, and when do you hope to have him back? Well, uh, we don't know if we will. Uh, he had an MRI today, and uh, he'll go through his options. Uh, it's a torn ACL again, and uh, it was weird because he did it on Tuesday. I uh, came back 10 minutes after the injury and practiced and practiced all day Wednesday yeah. and didn't feel anything, but it is torn. It, it, his knee buckled and uh, 
Uh, but like I said, 10 minutes later, it was fine. So we don't know what uh, he's going to weigh some options as he's going to meet with the doctors here probably uh, today, uh, later uh, during the game sure. or tomorrow and see what uh, what we can do or what he can do and uh, we'll go from there. But we'll support him uh, however we can. Certainly a tough break for you guys there. Uh, Logan Drackett, a bright spot last weekend in the net. Tonight you start Christian Short. Talk about Drackett's play last weekend and, and how the uh, rotation with the goaltenders will work this year. Yeah, Logan uh, had a, a really good game. Uh, you know, we, we know we put him in a tough situation and, uh, and part of that was on purpose to see how we would react to that type of environment. Uh, uh, both him, Christian, and Ian have all had very, very good camps. So uh, we're not going to make it a three-headed monster, but uh, right. it could be a two-headed monster, <laughs> so to speak. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. The competition has been very good in net. Uh, they're supportive of each other and uh, happy where that position is right now. Uh, Logan got the start last weekend, and Christian will get the start here tonight, and, and we'll go from there. Union comes in tonight, 0-5. Should be an easy night for you, right? <laughs> I wish it was, uh, but you know, I, you know, I talked to their coach a little bit earlier uh, today, and that uh, you know, their schedule was very, very grueling. Yeah, uh, going to BU, a lot of road uh, games and so on. Uh, but the record is what it is. But they still have enough firepower. They've got a, a drafted goalie. They've got two, uh, I think, very good lines, and a power play that's always been a, a, a key for them. I think yeah. their special teams in general. I think Rick Bennett does a tremendous job at Union. Uh, proven by his record. He doesn't need uh, me patting him on the back. So we got our hands full. I think we've got a very focused team. They've got five NCAA games under their belt versus our one. We've got to be ready to get going here tonight. And I think what I'm looking for tonight more than anything else is where are we with our compete level and what strides have we made in some of our systems and uh, special teams. Well, so much to build on after last weekend's 3-3 tie with Northeastern. Best of luck here tonight against Union. RPI comes in tomorrow night. Should be a very competitive weekend and a good challenge for you guys. Yeah, again, a uh, team that uh, had two ties uh, against Ohio State, who was ranked at the time. I think they still are. But, uh, you know, there's no easy games in college yeah. anymore. I mean, Northeastern might have been thinking they had something easy. They, they know better now, and, and I think all teams know that Anyone can beat anyone. You've got to put your best foot forward. So we're evaluating ourselves and hoping to move forward and push the needle up a little bit more and see where we're at. All right, Coach. Wayne Wilson joining us here on Pregame Live. Best of luck here tonight against Union and the rest of the weekend with RPI. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, Coach Wayne Wilson joining us here. Well, as we mentioned, it has been a struggle for the Dutchman this season. Union lost its top two forwards, starting goalie and two uh, top scoring defenseman from last season's NCAA tournament team. Plus, they've had to face a brutal non-conference schedule, as Coach Wilson mentioned. That included number two, Boston University, number three, Minnesota. It's safe to say the head coach, Rick Bennett, expected some growing pains this year. Our staff is kind of new going into the summer, and it sounds like we have a crystal ball, and uh, we certainly don't. But hey, with some growing pains, we played against some excellent hockey teams. We've got a, a very good hockey team that we're playing tonight. Um, probably one of the more offensive teams that we've seen. And you know what? If we're not buckled down defensively, it could be a long night. As disappointing and maybe frustrating as 0-5 is, how do you keep everybody, uh, you know, aware that it's a long season? Yeah, you know, it's all it all starts in the locker room with uh, the leaders in the group uh, to keep the room uh, in check and upbeat. And I think the unity group, uh, the leaders on our team have done that. And uh, it's only going to go up from here. It can't get any worse. Well, still to come on the program, the RIT women's hockey team hosted Yale this afternoon. Highlights and a visit from the head coach are on the way. Plus, we sit down with RIT's new president to discuss the athletic landscape here at RIT and what may be on the horizon for the program in the future. That's next. This is RIT Sports Zone pre-game live. Camerata gets it. A voice to hit. Here comes Camerata. Toe drag. But what a play by Gosses Bear again. Sliding across the ice like a windshield wiper. And they got four. Sullivan. Score! Goalie's gone, John. Six on five. Mike Riley throws it across. Here's Boyd. Boyd! What a play by Bodie. He goes towards the empty net, and of course he gets it! Another senior moment in Philadelphia. The Dutchmen are going to do it. This, this is good for college hockey. 
keep my union winning. Certainly gives a lot of programs hope. Yes, that's exactly right. And more ECAC pride. Back-to-back -back national championships, Yale and Pittsburgh. Union in Philadelphia. A hockey tradition is born in the city of brotherly love. Union in Philadelphia are champions. What a great moment for Union and its fans back in 2014, winning the title over Minnesota. The Tigers and Dutchmen go way back to the 80s and early 90s during the Division Three days for both programs. RIT leads the all-time series with a record of 12, 7, and 3. However, Union is 5-0-1 against RIT in the Division I era, an era that has seen both schools reach the Frozen Four. Well, Union has a lot in common with RIT. Both share hockey as their lone Division I sport, while all other athletic teams compete against one another in Division III's Liberty League. With a new president at RIT, we wanted to get Dr. David Munson's views on the athletic program and where it may be headed in the future. President Munson is a big sports fan who understands what athletics mean to a college community. I think athletics are important for a couple of reasons. Number one, we want to attract the best students to our campus. And that includes uh, students who want to be involved in athletics. But also, of course, athletics creates a strong spirit among the student body and alumni and uh, really adds to the vibrancy of our campus. When you look at RIT athletically, what comes to mind? What do you see at first glance? What I see is, uh, is serious students who are also good athletes, and I like that. And it certainly has been brought to my attention that the average GPA for our student athletes is higher than the campus average, and uh, that's quite a statistic. The athletic department has enjoyed tremendous growth and success over the past decade, prompting Dr. Munson to ask an interesting question to the campus in August. What about athletics? As you heard earlier, the program is doing really well. But what if we built a program that was perenni perennially ranked among the very top in the nation in Division Three, year after year? Would that further enliven our campus? Would it help us attract even better student athletes? We have a lot of those already. Would the investment be worth it? That's a, a question I'm asking around campus and trying to prompt us to think about this because uh, it may be that if we uh, offer some modest improvements in our facilities, and there are a lot of different things that have been talked about, we may attract even better student athletes and we may create an even more vibrant campus. And so that perhaps will be very worthwhile. Fundraising will be a major focus during Dr. Munson's tenure. He's open to adding more endowed coaching positions and a new outdoor stadium for soccer and lacrosse has been discussed. But what about Division I across the board? Some people that are asking about uh, the possibility of moving to Division I at some point, um, I don't think that's totally off the table, but that, that's nowhere near the top of my agenda. And so if that were to occur, I, I think that would be a long time from now. Going to Division I across the board, it, it certainly would be costly and, and uh, sort of all-consuming, if you will. The easiest way to make a go of it is if you can have a really outstanding football team in one of the top conferences, because then that becomes the revenue sport that can literally pay for the entire program. And so at Michigan, uh, the athletic program does not receive any support from the parent university. Uh, but, of course, that's not the story at most universities in the U.S., and so we've got to be a little bit cautious about this. I know it might be hard to think about it at this point, uh, just four months into your tenure here, but where do you see the athletic program here at RIT maybe five, ten years down the road? My dream would be that the sort of thing that I've kind of posited out there, um, there is this uh, uh, mythical sort of national championship at each division level in the NCAA. I would like to see us uh, place uh, regularly in the top five um, if we thought that were possible. And so we'll be looking at that and trying to assess what sorts of resources might be needed to make that happen and then to make a determination as to whether, quote, it would be worth it. We certainly thank Dr. Munson for his time. While not being Division I across the board restricts RIT, just like Union, from offering athletic scholarships, which Dr. Munson agrees is a bit of a disadvantage for the university. However, he told us he believes RIT hockey could not only reach a Frozen Four again, 
but they could win the title just, uh, just like the Dutchman of Union did three years ago. We welcome in the guys who will have the pleasure of calling tonight's game, Gene Battaglia and John DiTullio. Over the years, RIT hasn't fared well in non-conference games, guys, and they're without Brady Norris tonight, but after last week's performance against Northeastern, you got to think they come in with a whole lot of confidence. Oh, no doubt, Kevin. Good evening, and uh, yes, uh, Brady Norris not being available, John. That just puts a damper on Devastating. He, yeah. By the way, voted the Atlantic Hockey defense, uh, Defensive Player of the Week after his performance last week. It sends ripple effects through the lineup. He's great on the power play, great on the penalty kill. Captain, leader, devastating. Talked to him a week ago uh, on his way back from knee surgery and ACL. Optimistic, felt great, and just like that, it's over after one game. Well, Awful. for the, the RIT Tigers playing Union tonight, and that piece uh, put together by the Sports Zone group, yep. great with uh, Dr. Munson. Playing a union team that won the national championship, yep. a union team like RIT that's Division Three, with the exception of hockey. John, it can be done. It can, absolutely. They've proven it can be done, and we've seen RIT get to the Frozen Four. We saw RIT get one game away just a few years ago with Matt Garbowski's team, one win away from the Frozen Four. So they've been close, but I love the commitment by the new president. Absolutely. they Union has proven it. RIT is close. They went to a Frozen Four. We're one game away from getting back to the Frozen Four. No question. Well, Union tonight coming in at 0-5. It's not like they're coming in not needing a win here, John. But, uh, again, this is a Union team that has three NHL players on it. And centering the top line is Brent Zubitsky. Who is an incredible player. Now, they're 0-5 because they just had a brutal schedule uh, out of the gate. Uh, but you look at Zubitsky so far, three goals, two assists. Anchors that top line, great playmaker. Wayne says Union reminds him of his own team. They don't have one great player. It's got a bunch of grinders, uh, a group of really good players anchored by a really good goalie. So he expects a very physical game tonight. Up and down, no question. Both teams will like to get out and, let, and throw it at the net. If you were with us earlier in the pregame, you heard head coach Wayne Wilson telling Kevin Roche that it's a season-ending injury, essentially. For They're not calling it that right now, but for Brady Norris, which means Chase Norris tonight, yeah. Chase Norris for the rest of this year, John. He's got to lead that blue line. Absolutely. Now, if you're going to have an injury in one unit, have it happen to the defensive unit. They've, they're nine deep there. You lose a great player. You lose a captain. But it's one position on this team that they're extremely deep, and they've got his brother in Chase, who went down with a knee injury last year. In January, he's back on the ice and playing. Listen, they have a big, big year. There's no question. He anchors now the blue line. What a fun game last Saturday night. Tonight, John, what do the Tigers have to do? Well, stay the heck out of the box. Eight penalties. Wayne was not happy about this. Penalty kill was good, but you got to play clean. And, by the way, if the goalie situation, Christian Short now gets his shot. Logan Drackett, A-plus review. Christian Short has to stand tall, and you got to bring that energy for 60 minutes. We saw it last week against Northeastern. You got to compete for 60 minutes tonight if you're RIT. Yeah, that no too many men on the ice penalties. Yeah, John. just yeah. too many penalties yeah. last week, and it frustrated Wayne. But his penalty kill was outstanding. No doubt about it. Face off coming up tonight, a little after seven. Kevin, looking forward to calling this one tonight. That should be a fun one as the Tigers try to get their first win over Union in the Division I era. We'll see how they do tonight. Well, still to come here tonight, RIT women's hockey faced off against Yale this afternoon. Highlights are on the way, and we'll be joined by head coach Scott McDonald. It's all next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Back here at the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology where the Tigers host Union tonight. RIT tied its opener a week ago while Union comes in 0-5. Both programs looking for a victory when the puck drops in about 15 minutes from now. Well, after opening the season on the road, the RIT women's hockey team is in the midst of a six-game homestand this weekend. Just like the men's team, the ladies are entertaining a squad from ECAC. Tigers and Yale facing off here at the Policini Center Earlier this afternoon, after a scoreless first period, the Tigers and Bulldogs playing four-on-four -four hockey. Kalen Johnson, the shot. Candace Sheriff, the rebound. Sheriff's third goal on the year. And RIT had a 1-0 lead. But later in the period, Yale on the power play. Emily Monahan gets credit for the goal here. They would review it. She would get credit. 
The goal counted. The game was tied at one. To the third, just 39 seconds in. Caitlin Gatley beats Jesse O'Leary unassisted. The Bulldogs took a 2-1 lead. Then just over a minute later, Yell would extend that lead. Laura Anderson to Jordan Chancellor. Yell went on to a 3-1 victory here today. The RIT women's hockey team back on the ice here again tomorrow afternoon to wrap up their weekend series with Yale. Faceoff is at 1 o'clock. And you can come out and be a part of the action. Purchase your tickets now at RIT Tickets. Dot com. Joined by the head coach of the RIT women's hockey team, Scott McDonald, now in his 12th season here at RIT. And a tough loss today, the third in a row, the third straight game where you've only scored one goal. Yeah. How much of a concern is the offensive zone play? Uh, it's concerning, but, you know, a little bit, it's kind of walking that fine line where I think we're getting our chances more than what we were last year, which was nice. And uh, I thought we brought some, uh, some players in that can put the puck in the net. And just right now they're a little, they're playing young. You know, and they just got to get game time, get minutes on the ice to find it, find that balance of this level. And uh, But we're getting our chances, which is not something we've said for, for a while now. Sure. So it is nice that we're getting the chances, but sooner or later it's going to go in the net for us. Uh, past couple of seasons have been rough for you. What are some of the, the positives that you've seen so far from this team? What do you like about this team? So far, I think we're moving the puck much better than what we have been. I think we're a much faster team right now. Um, our depth is a little bit better than, uh, than before. And, um, those are just little things that we recruited. We wanted to focus on that stuff from a recruiting standpoint. We knew we need to get faster. We, were, we are faster. Um, and I thought today, for the most part, uh, we carried the play, yeah. you know, and a couple of bad breaks for us. And, you know, that's that's hockey. That's how it goes sometimes. So we just got to earn our breaks uh, tomorrow. When you look at the men's team, you were at the Brick City game a week ago. Yeah. What, what impressed you about that first game against Northeastern last week? You know what? There was a belief right from the puck drop that they could hang with the big boys. Yeah. You know, they weren't intimidated by anybody on the ice or what kind of draft pick they had on the ice. It didn't matter. They were just us against them mentality and that you know you see the sea of orange and blue cross it's awesome i love that game i love being at the game and uh but just watching the guys compete on the ice like it doesn't matter if you're a scholarship school non-scholarship school you want to compete you can compete with anybody when uh, when you're you're willed to do it you know and it was good it was fun to watch yeah, it always is fun down at the Blue Cross Arena at the War Memorial. Uh, great site to be around for homecoming. And, of course, great here at the Policini Center, too. Yep. The women's team back here tomorrow, and they will be here next weekend as well as conference begins against Lindenwood. Yeah, finally. You know, you get uh, six games non-conference just to test some line combinations out, play the lineup a little bit more, than, or, or get people ready for your conference games. And then next week, it's, uh, it's go time. Points are on the line, and we'll be... We'll be ready. All right. Well, best of luck to you, head coach Scott McDonald of the Thank RIT you. women's hockey team. They take on Yale here tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Still to come here tonight, if you didn't make it home for last weekend's game with Northeastern, we'll share some of our top images from the annual Brick City homecoming game at Blue Cross. That's next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Just a tremendous job by our sports zone photographers, Caitlin Dolan, Cobert Swem, Riley Jocelyn, Jedediah Plumley, Brian Bennett, and Howard Eakin last weekend for capturing so many of the wonderful moments from the Brick City homecoming game at the Blue Cross Arena. One of the many highlights 
on the calendar each season. Well, just a reminder, we are back with you tomorrow night as the Tigers host RPI. Our coverage begins at 6.30 with RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders, followed by the Tigers and Engineers at 7.05 right here on CW Rochester and RITSC.com. Of course, if you've never been on campus for an RIT game, Come join us sometime this season. You can purchase tickets to RIT men's and women's hockey games by visiting the Policini Center box office Monday through Friday from 10 to 6 by calling 475-4121 or visiting RITtickets.com. And if you're just joining us, Brady Norse, the defenseman for the RIT Tigers, will not play this weekend, and his injury does not look good, so he will be out of the lineup possibly for the remainder of the season, although they're waiting to see further tests from the doctors. That'll do it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone Pregame Live. We thank you so much for watching. Up next, John and Gene have the call as RIT faces Union. We'll see you back here at intermission. Enjoy the game, everyone. RIT Sports Zone Live begins now. <laughs>